Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to the Live Inspired Podcast, Monday Morning Moments with John O'Leary. As you know by now, we record these so that you and I can begin our days and our weeks in awe and on fire with the burst of inspiration. And I think inspiration is something we all need a little bit more of because in our society, every single topic immediately polarizes, it fragments us farther, and quickly leads to rigidly drawn lines between two opposing sides. Those on our perceived side, they're right. They're our allies. They're the good guys. And those on the other side, they're just wrong. They are there to be pitied for their unawareness, canceled for their ignorance, or attacked for their stupidity. So what will the result be of all this elevated anger? What happens as our media friends complicitly sow seeds of outrage within each of us every day? What happens as our political leaders jam a larger and a larger wedge into our society? What are the consequences if we choose to continue down the hostile, divisive path that we're presently on? Well, the answer, I think, is framed brilliantly in one of my favorite poems by James Patrick Kenny. It was written in the early 1960s. Seems like a long time ago, maybe, but it is tragically highly relevant today. Here we go. It's called The Cold Within by James Patrick Kinney. Six humans trapped by happenstance in dark and bitter cold. Each possessed a stick of wood, or so the story's told. They're dying fire in need of logs, but the first one held hers back for of the faces around the fire. She noticed one was black. The next one looked across the way, saw one not of his church, and could not bring himself to give the fire his stick of birch. The third one sat in tattered clothes. He gave his coat a hitch. Why should his log be put to use to warm the idle rich? And the rich man sat back and thought of wealth he had in store, and keeping all that he had earned from the lazy, shiftless, poor. The black man's face bespoke revenge as the fire passed from his sight. He saw in his stick of wood a chance to spite the white. And the last one of this forlorn group did not accept for gain. Giving just to those who gave was how he played the game. Their sticks held tight in death's stilled hands was proof enough of sin. They did not die from cold without. They died from cold within. Uh, Brothers and sisters, as you pull up to the carpool lines, as you continue the workout, as you get ready for this day and this week, I'm going to read to you that last line one more time. Here it comes. They did not die from the cold without. They died from the cold within. It's not unreasonable to feel the chill of discouragement. Sometimes we all do. With so many individuals, though, reporting increased loneliness, elevated dread, growing mistrust, and heightened anxiety, it should come as no surprise many of us feel as if we are sitting around a fire, angry at all the others, furious about our past, incensed by our plight, and distraught by our future. Through inaction or action, by omission or commission, through violence or subtle indifference, and I'm not sure which one is worse, it's one way to move forward from where we are, and it will lead to us grasping tightly the wood in our hands as the fire slowly dies, as the possibility, my friends, slowly fades. That's one way to do it. Or, and there's always the or in life, or, Or we can make a radically different decision to embrace deep personal accountability for where we are, determined to come back together, engage with those different than ourselves, and listen, truly listen to their opinions. Rather than ranting and posting and canceling, we can listen with an open mind and an open heart capable of actually learning from those who have had wildly different life experiences than our own. We can acknowledge that the redemption of today's profound challenges demand far more than a single party or one opinion or some pithy social media post. Uh, My friends, it's important 
that we recognize our past mistakes don't have to negatively define possibility of doing better going forward. It's critical to remember that hate and anger and ignorance cannot possibly cure hate and anger and ignorance. I'm going to say it again. Hate and anger and ignorance will never cure hate and anger and ignorance in our wondrously, wildly, beautifully diverse community. It's necessary to love and respect one another despite, maybe because, of difference in opinions and beliefs and convictions. So as the fire begins to wane and as the light begins to fade, it's time to return to the circle together. It's time to learn from the mistakes that we've been making for too long, to knock down the walls we built to keep others out, to re-engage in solutions that elevate not only individuals or ourselves, but culture. It's time to not only take full responsibility for our lives, but to recognize the calling to serve as our brothers and sisters keeper in their lives too. In other words, in a marketplace where many angrily and selfishly hold fast to their wood, it's time for us to throw ours directly under the fire. Time for us to go first. My friends, I want to thank you for being part of our Live Inspired Circle. I want to thank you for releasing your log on the fire that we are stoking here. And I want to remind you that although yeah, sometimes the light seems to dim a little bit, the foundation is firm. Your life does matter. And the best is yet to come. So for this time and until next time, my name is John O'Leary. Today's your day. What a gift. Live Inspired.